Mistakes are often seen as opportunities to improve. We can look at a mistake and use the experience to learn how to avoid making it again. But some mistakes are a one-way street. Some mistakes create a point of no return where the only thing we can do is watch it unfold. In the year 2000, Russian diver Yuri Lipsky made a series of simple mistakes while diving in Egypt, which would lead to him sinking to the bottom of the ocean and becoming trapped, forcing him to live the most terrifying and painful seven minutes of his life as he was slowly poisoned by his own air tank. This is his story. This is a blue hole. It's a large underwater sinkhole which develops in limestone or coral reef. The name comes from the fact that from an aerial photograph that's exactly what they look like. A deep, dark, blue hole in the ocean. A seemingly bottomless and freezing cold abyss in the otherwise beautiful and sunny ocean. They usually formed during ice ages of the past when water levels were much lower, exposing the limestone to rain, which erodes a hole in the rock formation. Then, as the planet warms up, water levels rise and the hole in the rock becomes a deep dark void in the ocean. Forged in times of ice, and swallowed, as many things are, by a creeping ocean. There are many blue holes around the world from the Dragon Hole in the South China Seas to Dean's Blue Hole in the Bahamas. One such blue hole is the one off the coast of the Egyptian peninsula in the Red Sea, known simply as the Dahab Blue Hole. It's a notorious blue hole for a few reasons. It's 328 feet deep and situated very close to the shore, making it easily accessible with no vehicle needed. It is also enclosed near the surface by a structure called the saddle. This structure also prevents any current inside the blue hole, and there is only a very weak current at the surface entrance. Its proximity to shore, lack of currents, and large array of colourful marine life give the impression that this is a great place for beginner divers to dive. This particular blue hole is notorious because it's allegedly the site of the world's largest number of diver fatalities. A few days before his death, Yuri Lipsky arrived in Dahab, Egypt, to visit the popular Blue Hole. Before diving, he wandered around looking for people to chat to about the dive he was planning. He showed up once and he was like everybody else showing up around Dahab and we hear it every day. I'm here for two days. I want to do the canyon and the blue hole. Regardless, experience, certification, regardless, nothing. Yuri himself was a diving instructor and believed himself to be more than capable of this kind of dive with little to no assistance. But he seemed to have little to no interest in certifying himself for the dive via the proper procedure and channels. Yuri was a technical diver and was reportedly interested in doing a bounce dive which is where the diver descends to the bottom very quickly and then ascends again just as quickly. This dangerous practice is usually done to beat a personal depth best by divers not wanting to do it the safe way. Diving is a popular pastime for millions of people all over the world. For thalassophobes like myself, there are a few things more terrifying but generally speaking, it's extremely popular. There are two types of undersea diving, recreational and technical. Recreational, as you might expect, is the type of diving most tourists engage in. There are two types of recreational diving. These are breath hold and scuba. One using scuba equipment and one using just your own natural ability to hold your breath. 
All types of recreational diving is conducted in areas where the risk of accidental death is low. It tends to be done at relatively shallow depths to avoid the need for decompression and mostly open water as opposed to enclosed spaces which may be likely to panic an inexperienced diver. Most times, when recreational diving, visibility will be very clear and it should be easy to navigate where you're going. It's also standard practice for recreational diving to be done with a buddy, hence the term buddy diving. The theme is the same, safety first. The aim is to enjoy the ocean without invoking a fear of it. Technical diving is a fairly recent term but which describes pretty much everything else. Tech divers are sometimes solitary, diving in enclosed, deeper spaces where visibility and navigation might be a lot harder. The theme here could be described as challenge. The purpose of technical diving is to challenge yourself, see something new or interesting. In technical diving, you don't just learn about your surroundings. You discover things about yourself as the more unforgiving conditions make you realize you were braver than you thought. No type of diving is safe, but recreational diving is considered to be significantly more safe than technical diving, in which the conditions for disaster are far more common. The Blue Hole at the Hab is a very popular dive, despite the large number of diving deaths which occur there. Typically, divers will start at a point nearby and descend through a narrow cave known as the Bells, due to the noise that the divers' tanks make as they hit the sides of the cave while descending. Once descended, they'll move through an opening which leads into the open ocean. The diver will then follow the edge of the shore wall until they reach the lowered part of the Blue Hole wall called the Saddle. They will then enter the blue hole over the saddle and move back towards the shore to the exit. The depth inside the hole itself maxes out at just over 100 meters or 328 feet. The other way to dive the blue hole is to start from the beach itself and dive down into the hole, with most people aiming for the arch at 55 meters, which is a hole in the cave wall which also leads to the ocean. This is how Yuri entered the dive. Diving is extremely dangerous when you don't know what you're doing. Thanks to movies, most of us are aware that ascending too rapidly can cause a variety of problems known as decompression sickness or the bends. However, most people who aren't technical divers are unaware of the fact that the very air they're breathing from their tanks can cause something called nitrogen narcosis. All gases are subject to changes in volume in relation to pressure. Specifically, the pressure of a gas is inverse to its volume and vice versa. So as pressure increases, the volume of gas decreases. This is important to remember in diving for two reasons. One, as you dive, the amount of available air in your tank decreases in volume due to the pressure and becomes more dense, meaning that breathing at the same rate will use more air, so it will run out much faster. Two, the reduction in gas molecule volume means that gases can move outside the bloodstream and lungs where it should be and dissolve inside lipid tissue of cell membranes. The deeper you go, the stronger this effect is the effects on your body are dramatic. This can cause the sufferer to feel no noticeable symptoms at 10 meter depth. Between 10 and 30 meters, you'll experience mild euphoria, mild impairment of motor function. Between 30 and 50 meters, you'll get delayed responses to audio and visual stimuli. You'll have a false sense of confidence and you'll start to engage in idiopathic laughing and anxiety. Between 50 and 70 meters, you'll start to feel very sleepy. You'll have strongly impaired judgment, confusion, hallucination, dizziness, and extreme terror. From 70 to 90 meters, you'll get total loss of concentration, loss of dexterity, loss of memory, but increased excitability. 
anything deeper than 90 meters, and you'll start to experience intense hallucinations, increased hearing and visual sensitivity, or total loss of vision, dizziness, depressive and manic states, unconsciousness, and death. To counter this problem, technical divers venturing deeper where the gas concentration increases will mix helium into their tanks. So the tank which previously just contained nitrogen and oxygen will also contain helium to dilute the other two gases and make them less concentrated as pressure increases. This is called trimix. The reason divers don't just use pure oxygen is because pure oxygen causes oxygen toxicity. Our bodies have evolved to breathe a mixture of gases and when there is too much oxygen there's not enough haemoglobin in our blood to carry that oxygen where it needs to go and it ends up in places where it shouldn't be. And this can cause blurred vision, confusion, chest pain, breathing difficulty, convulsions and death. Even the thing which keeps you alive will kill you if you breathe too much of it. Yuri prepared his camera for the day's dive. He had opted against diving with a buddy. His equipment for the day was the necessary wetsuit, gloves, flippers, mask, a buoyancy control device, and a wrist monitor. He was also wearing a weighted diving belt and carrying an underwater camera. On his back was one single tank of air. Despite thinking himself a very competent diver, Yuri made a few very crucial mistakes. The first was that his air tank did not contain Trimix. It was a simple nitrogen-oxygen mix. The second was that he hadn't taken into account the added weight of his camera when calculating how heavy his weight belt needed to be. The final mistake was that he had not checked his equipment thoroughly enough and did not know that his buoyancy control device didn't function correctly and would not be able to prevent him from sinking too deep. These would prove to be mistakes which would cost Yuri his life. After preparing his camera, Yuri entered the water and began to descend. As he began to drop, he realized that his rate of descent was far too fast, and so began to use his buoyancy control device to slow his descent. But upon turning the valve, nothing happened. He did not slow down. Quickly, he began to sink to depths which he had not intended to go. As he sank deeper, the nitrogen in his tank began to decrease in volume and increase in concentration, quickly flooding his system with nitrogen. In a very short time, a strong sense of confusion began to cloud his judgment. He turns the valve again to try to inflate the device and send himself back to the surface. But again, it doesn't work. As he reached this point, the concentration of oxygen in each breath was causing him to have chest pains when breathing and likely causing him to panic as he ditched his weight belt in a final attempt to achieve some level of buoyancy and float to the surface. Unfortunately for Yuri, with no working control device, he would not be able to create enough buoyancy to lift himself from the ocean floor. The pressure of the ocean above him was far too great and he was slowly and painfully claimed by the ocean. <laughs> 